The Big Ten has a great big mess on its hands. And it, in some ways, may surprise you, but in other ways, if you have followed this sport for a little while, it shouldn't surprise you at all. So Kevin Warren, who was last seen doing such things as trying to sabotage the 2020 college football season, decided, as it turns out, to leave one last bag of crap on his desk before he vacated the premises as Big Ten Conference Commissioner. You remember that massive TV deal? Do you remember that thing? Seven billion dollars. Revolutionary. It's, it's groundbreaking. It's so innovative. It's next level. It also, as it turns out, didn't have signatures on it. It's not finalized. What? We already released the balloons. I know. Well, we already hired a new commissioner. Kevin Warren's not even here anymore. He took all of our pats on the back. I know. That's where Pete Thamel comes in. ESPN.com, late this afternoon. Pete Thamel comes out with a story, and he just kind of casually reveals, yeah, uh, that media deal that everyone's praising the Big Ten for, it's not finalized. What? Well, let's talk about it, friends. In fact, this is from the Thamel article. I, I, if you know who we're talking about here, it shouldn't surprise you. Then again, if you understand how many people have to be in the room, how many presidents and chancellors had to have signed off on this thing, there is a lot of blame to go around here. This is not solely at the feet of Kevin Warren, but a lot of it is at the feet of Kevin Warren. Uh, quote from the Thamel article. You can read this entire piece on ESPN.com. <laughs> Nearly three months before the season kicks off and those TV deals begin, the Big Ten does not have completed long-form contracts which include the fine print details. Instead, Mr. Petiti, who is the new commissioner up there, is engaged in significant horse trading, according to multiple sources, to get the NBC primetime deal even finished and figure out what the network calls outstanding issues in order to uphold as much value as possible. Allow me to translate. There were some details that needed to be explained, and instead of explaining them, the person who's responsible for facilitating this kept the wool over people's eyes to get them to sign off on it so we could celebrate and then leave and drop the whole shrug of the shoulders, not my problem anymore. The article continues, quote, these deals are not done and they aren't what they were represented to be from the standpoint of the NBC deal and the availability of all members to participate in November games in primetime, said an industry source. Allow me to summarize. This is really where the first point of contention comes in. For those of you who live in Sarasota, Florida, you may not understand the tolerance agreement, as they call it, in the Big Ten. But in the Big Ten, there's been a long understanding. In the Big Ten, there's been a long time upheld understanding that we don't play night games past a certain point in the season. It's just their way of doing things. They got us several reasons for it. It's just their way of doing things. Well, Kevin Warren gets in the room, and this is according to, to this report from Pete Thamel. Kevin Warren gets in the room with NBC, and they realize, boy, those primetime games are worth a lot of money, though, wouldn't they? Wouldn't they be worth a lot of money? Let, just do it, Kevin. Let's just do it. It's, it's your inventory, after all. Uh, more on that in a second as well. It's your inventory. They'll, they'll go along with it. Just do it. Oh, okay. Licks the pen, signs the paper. Voila. We've got a prime time Big Ten package of games. Here's the problem. They never went to the member institutions. They never went to the athletic directors and said, hey, what you think about overturning our long-held rule about not playing those night games? And all of a sudden, the coaches are looking around while they announce the deal saying, we're going to do what? Ohio State said, the blank we are, and ditto for Penn State, and ditto for Michigan. And that is the crux of the current issue, because NBC paid a lot of money for that package. And all of a sudden, the three biggest brands in the conference are saying, y'all have fun with it. Like, we'll watch Iowa-Purdue in prime time. We're not going to be there, but we'll watch you in prime time. And then NBC said, hold up. You think we paid that money for you to not participate? What's going on, Tony Petiti? And then Tony Petiti says, I just got here five minutes ago. I thought all this was wrapped up. And it turns out not so much. Yes, friends, they got a big problem. That's not the entirety of the problem. Oh, we continue. There's all, <laughs> I can't believe this is a real thing. There's also this, this little issue of Kevin Warren agreeing to give NBC 
the Big Ten championship game in 2026, which he had no authority to do because the Big Ten doesn't own their own inventory, which is sort of a part of the story that I had heard about because I work in TV, but was not public knowledge for a long time. But it started to become public knowledge. And that is the fact that the Big Ten does not own their own rights. Fox does. The Big Ten Network, which is owned by Fox, does. Uh, that was the deal they entered into in 2016. So you see, when you're, when you're reading all these stories about the Big Ten signing TV deals and whatnot, it's really just a sub-licensing agreement that NBC or CBS or whomever is signing with Fox. And that's why Fox representatives were in the room when CBS reps were in the room talking to the Big Ten. It's like you're going on a date and all of a sudden the boyfriend's over here. And you're like, what is he doing here? Oh, uh, he, he owns me. What? Well, you didn't tell me this. This changes a lot. Yeah. So that was going on the whole time. Now, now imagine for a second, if you will, imagine the fine folks over there at Fox. Got a lot of friends over there. Imagine their face. When inventory they own is being awarded to another network without their consent. And they're saying, you're doing what? The blank you are. It's just that Ozark quote over and over and over again. And so we've got an impasse right now that hopefully is being worked through for the sake of the Big Ten and the fans up there. But all the while, you got a new commissioner who's come in, and that commissioner comes in, and he has a long track record in television, thankfully. And I'm sure that Tony Petiti came in and thought, I'm hopping on a, I'm hopping on a jet plane here. And you did hop on a jet plane, but it's on the tarmac still. Because this tire's deflated, and that wing needs to be adjusted, and we haven't even fueled this. And he's like, we have to take off in 15 minutes. I know. That's why we hired you. Have fun. What's going to happen? I don't know. I have no clue. Oh, by the way, because that Big Ten championship game was given to NBC without proper consent, the Big, the Big Ten's got to pay $40 million to Fox. Guess whose pocket that comes out of? Member institutions' pockets. Do you know what that does to an athletic department when you've already budgeted for your year and then someone walks in and says, hey, I know it's May, but we need 40 million. You guys got it? Hello? Hello, everyone? Oh, you're on vacation? Well, when you get back, Illinois, Rutgers, you're talking to your mom. When you get off the phone, we need $40 million. We already spent it. Not my problem, man. We need $40 million because as it turns out, we gave away something we weren't allowed to give away. Okay, so, so that's what's going on in the Big Ten right now. I'm sure we will hear a rebuttal because uh, there's this other little issue for Kevin Warren, and that is much as was the case with Jim Delaney, because he negotiated a new media rights deal, he's supposed to get a bonus. Delaney got a big bonus, like $20 million. <laughs> Kevin Warren is supposed to have a bonus coming his way. And as you could imagine, the Big Ten is is meeting with, with various legal minds to try and find out whether they even owe him that bonus. Hiccup. So there's going to be a lot, of, a lot of posturing over the coming days. I don't doubt, by the way. Well, I say I don't doubt. I could see a world where this very story comes out because of the need to paint Kevin Warren in a negative light. And I would just counter with, you don't need to... Uh, advantageously come out with stories to paint that guy in that negative a light. Just remind people of what he did in the past. That's all you really need to do. That's my take on the matter. I don't consult for the Big Ten, though. So, yeah, that's where they are right now. In the words, so, so in other words, if you're a Pac-12 fan, if you are an ACC fan, in the words of Robert California, the 1% is suffering too, people. No, that's not the... It, in the words of Robert California, the 1% are suffering too, people. Some people didn't like Robert California in the office, and I thought he was a well-placed character too late in the series. Put him in season four. Give me him instead of Charles Minor. How would that have worked out? Probably pretty good chemistry. Mm -hmm.